Hello students, today I will discuss Cambridge A-Level Chemistry October-November 2023 Paper 22. October-November 2023 Paper 22. Please subscribe, like and share my channel. Let's move. Number 1. The element silicon, phosphorus and sulfur are in period 3 of the peri periodic table period 3 a1 describe the variation in atomic radius from silicon to sulfur silicon phosphorus sulfur this is across the across the period left to right So, radius decreases, you know across the period atomic radius decreases because number of proton increases, so proton attracts electron shell more strongly, that is why radius decreases, radius decreases. Silicon to sulfur atomic radius decreases. Next, the melting point of silicon is 1410 degree centigrade, the melting point of sulfur is 113, means silicon has high melting point and sulfur has very low melting point. Explain, question is asking you, explain these differences. You know, Silicon is a giant covalent and sulfur is a simple molecular. Silicon is a giant covalent and sulfur is a simple molecular. Silicon needs breaking covalent bonds and sulfur needs breaking intermolecular pores. For melting sulfur needs covalent bond breaking for melting sulfur needs breaking only simple molecular force. So more energy is needed to break covalent bonds than intermolecular forces IMF intermolecular forces. So why silicon has high melting temperature and sulfur is low? Because silicon is a giant covalent and sulfur is a simple molecular for melting silicon covalent bonds have to break for melting sulfur only weak intermolecular forces need to be break so to break strong covalent bonds more energy is needed than intermolecular forces Now, this table shows some properties of the element silicon to sulfur. This silicon, phosphorus and sulfur. So, question is asking you total number of electrons in S subshell s orbital p and s so and second one total number of electrons in p subshell and first ionization energy is given 
formula of the most common chloride are given so now you see silicon a subshell silicon 1s2 2 electron 2s2 2 2, 2 electron and 3s2 2, 2 total 6 electron silicon has 6 electron in s subshell or s orbital why 1s2 this 2 electron 2 electron 4 2 electron 6 okay now you see count is p orbital p subshell silicon phosphorus phosphorus you see 1s2 2 electron 2s2 2, 2 electron 2 to 4 3s2 2, 2 electron 2 plus 2 plus 2 6 electron a orbital contains 6 electron now sulfur you see sulfur 1s2 electron 2s2 electron 2 plus 2 4 3s2 electron this also 6 electron that means silicon phosphorus sulfur all three atom 6 electron in their s orbital or s subshell now you see phi subshell number of electrons in phi subshell so at first silicon 8 how 2p6 six, 6 electron 3p2 6 plus 2 8 8 electron then phosphorus 2p6 six, 6 electron 3p3 6 plus 3 total 9 electrons here 9 electrons p subshell then sulfur 2p6 six, 6 electron 3p4 6 plus 4 10 electrons this is their p subshell and S subshell silicon phosphorus and sulfur to show the total number of S and P electrons in, in, <coughs> in an atom of silicon phosphorus and sulfur this is the answer now Number two, construct an equation to represent the first ionization energy of silicon. First ionization of silicon. First ionization energy of silicon. silicon lose one electron to form silicon single positive gaseous ion or you can write silicon gas loss one electron to form gaseous ion and you know first ionization energy what the amount of energy needed to remove one electron from a gaseous atom to produce single positive gaseous ion the amount of energy required is known as first ionization energy i mean gaseous one atom lose one electron to produce single positive gaseous ion the amount of energy required needed is known as first ionization ionization energy here left side minus means right side plus now 3 
three possible values for the first ionization energy of phosphorus is given. This six one nine eight nine three kilojoule per mole one zero six zero kilojoule per mole. Now, question is asking you explain your choice including a comparison of your chosen value to those of silicon and sulfur. Phosphorus. So, this is circle one, this is the phosphorus value first energy of phosphorus now circle the circle the correct value which will be the accurate value this is the 1060 kilojoule per mole now why explain your choice comparison those value of sulfur and silicon this four marks is given you see phosphorus has greater nuclear charge than silicon because phosphorus has 15 proton silicon has 14 proton so phosphorus has greater nuclear charge greater nucleus power so phosphorus has greater attraction between nucleus and its outer electron compared to silicon as phosphorus has more proton in in its nucleus compared to silicon so the attraction between phosphorus nucleus and outer electron is more that now sulfur sulfur has two electrons in a p orbital resulting in spin pair repulsion you know if you sulfur c electronic con configuration of sulfur last outer shell has 3p4 3p so there are three there are three orbital you know p p4 four electrons so one two three but in one orbital electron spin pairing occurs if electron spin pairing occurs there are repulsion between electrons so first ionization will be lower that's why phosphorus have the highest first ionization energy compared to silicon and sulfur Okay. Now number 4, silicon tetrachloride and phosphorus pentachloride reacts with water forming misty fumes, steamy fumes. Now identifying the chemicals responsible for the misty fumes, this answer is hydrogen chloride or you can write ACL. How? Silicon tetrachloride you know reacts with water to form silicon dioxide and hydrogen chloride gas this is the misty misty fumes also phosphorus pentachloride reacts with water to produce phosphoric acid and hydrogen chloride gas so for hydrogen chloride gas we see misty fumes then number five predict the shape of sulfur dichloride sulfur dichloride this answer will be non-linear because non-linear means not linear non-linear why non-linear sulfur is you know sulfur is a group six element outer shell has six electron three four five six now you see the sulfur form two covalent bond with two chlorine 
1 2 so extra 4 electron this molecule has 2 bond pair and 1 lone pair 2 lone pair 2 lone pair sulfur dichloride has 2 bond pair electron and 2 lone pair you know lone pair lone pair repulsion is a stronger then lone pair bond pair then bond pair bond pair so this molecule has taken bend shape or v shape i mean non linear next come to next question number 2 you see nitrogen 2 oxide and nitrogen 4 oxide or nitrogen monoxide or nitrogen dioxide react at 25 degree centigrade to, to form to give dinitrogen trioxide dinitrogen trioxide and this is an delta is value is negative so this reaction is exothermic reaction and you know reverse this reaction is reversible reversible sign and reaches equilibrium in a closed system you know chemical equilibrium happen in a closed system or closed container uh, this diagram figure 2 1 this figure shows the how the rate of forward reaction changes with time initially the rate of reverse reaction is 0 now you see this is the rate of forward reaction rate of forward reaction starting rate of reaction high ongoing time rate of reaction is decreased and you see initially the rate of re reverse reaction is zero so starting zero ongoing time rate of reverse reaction will be increases and a certain point rate of forward reaction and rate of backward reaction this point is known as chemical equilibrium rate of forward reaction and rate of backward reaction same here forward reaction is decreasing reverse reaction is rate of reverse reaction is increasing this point both rate of reaction become same this meeting point is known as dynamic equilibrium now you see So, to, es to escape how the rate of reverse reaction changes with time. With time rate of re reverse reaction is increases and this point this rate of re reverse re reaction and rate of forward reaction become same. Number B state state how the position of e, e, position of e, <coughs> how the position of equilibrium changes if at all when the reaction take place at hundred degree centigrade. Okay, you know. this reaction happened 25 degree centigrade and reaction is exothermic reaction so now temperature is has been increased you know if you if temperature is increased e equilibrium will move to the endothermic side that means at 100 degrees degree centigrade equilibrium will move from right to left so now see the answer temperature is 100 degree centigrade 
so temperature temperature is increased how the position of equilibrium changes when temperature is, has become 100 degrees centigrade position of equilibrium moves from moves from to the left i mean right to left right to left right to left i write here position of e equilibrium moves to the left because forward reaction is exothermic reaction why exo because delta h value is given negative now you see next question number c what is given composition of equilibrium mixture of nitrogen monoxide nitrogen dioxide dinitrogen trioxide at 101 kilopascal total pressure is 101 kilopascal uh, these are the their ga gas and their number of moles at equilibrium equilibrium moles are given so at first and question is asking calculate kp kp means what e equilibrium constant when pressure is considered kp calculate kp the equilibrium constant with respect to partial pressure deduce the units of kp i mean calculate kp with units question is asking you now at first you will find out total number of moles this plus this plus this you get total number of moles total number of moles you calculate then you see this is the nitrogen monoxide nitrogen dioxide and to o3 is the product so first mole fraction what is mole fraction mole fraction is the number of mole of a gas divided by total number of mole so mole fraction of n o will be n or mole is given divided by total number of mole here total number of mole n or mole fraction of NO mole of NO divided by total number of mole you get this value and mole fraction of NO2 mole of NO2 divided by total number of mole then mole fraction of N2O3 mole of N2O3 divided by total number of mole you calculate all three mole fraction now you calculate after that partial pressure and you know partial pressure equal mole fraction into total pressure partial pressure you know p a means partial pressure of a mole fraction means x a mole fraction into total pressure total pressure partial pressure equal mole fraction into total pressure so you will calculate now partial pressure of no mole fraction of no times total pressure is given 101 so you will get the mole partial pressure of no this then partial pressure of no2 nitrogen dioxide will be mole fraction of no2 times total pressure you get this value partial pressure then partial pressure of n2o3 will be mole fraction mole fraction of n2o3 times total pressure so now you got this values partial pressure partial pressure partial pressure so you can now calculate kp kp equal partial pressure of product 
divided by partial pressure of reactant. So, if you put values, this is the product, partial pressure of product and partial pressure of reactant this multiply this, this is square. If you calculate, you get Kp this value and units will be this is the kilo pascal and kilo pascal square. So, you will get 1 by kilo pascal that means kilo pascal inverse inverse. Now, identify the one natural process and one man-made process that cause the formation of atmospheric nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. This is the natural processes lightening, thunderstorm lightening. Man-made process will be internal combustion engines internal combustion engines produces nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide and natural process light during lightening nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide is produced. Nitrogen dioxide is a brown gas you know that can be used to form nitric acid nitrogen dioxide is a free radical now what is free radical this free free radical definition you know species with one or more unpaired electron not paired paired electrons a species with only one or more than one unpaired electron these are known as free radical say chlorine one electron this is the chlorine free radical because this electron is unpaired CH3 this is free radical this electron is free species with one or more unpaired ele electrons is called free radical Number 2, nitrogen dioxide has a catalytic role in the oxidation of atmospheric sulfur dioxide. Catalytic role, I mean works as a catalyst. Write equation to show the catalytic role of nitrogen dioxide in this oxidation. You see nitrogen dioxide. First, nitrogen dioxide oxidizes sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide because sulfur dioxide has 2 oxygen, sulfur trioxide has 3 oxygen. I mean, sulfur dioxide is oxidized, oxidized because 1 oxygen is added. At the same time, nitrogen dioxide or nitrogen 4 oxide reduced to nitrogen 2 oxide. Here 2 oxygen, here 1 oxygen, oxygen number decreases, reduce. Next this nitrogen 2 oxide or nitrogen monoxide is oxidized by air to form nitrogen dioxide. So nitrogen dioxide is again regenerated. That means nitrogen dioxide works as catalyst. State 1 environmental consequence of oxidation of atmospheric sulfur dioxide. You know, sulfur dioxide gas creates acid rain. Sulfur dioxide gas is responsible for acid rain. Sulfur dioxide converted to sulfur trioxide. Then, sulfur trioxide reacts with water to form sulfurous acid. Sulfurous acid oxidized by air to form 
sulfuric acid sulfuric acid mix with rain water to form acid rain acid rain next a student tritates nitric acid nitric acid you know hno3 nitric acid to form a solution containing aqueous magnesium nitrate nitric acid used to make magnesium nitrate so number 1 identify a base that the student could use nitric acid plus magnesium hydroxide base so magnesium nitrate this magnesium reacts with nitrate ion magnesium nitrate will be produced so student could use magnesium hydroxide you can write formula you can write formula or name magnesium hydroxide number 2 the student evaporates the water to obtain magnesium nitrate solid when the solid is heated it decomposes magnesium nitrate write an equation for the decomposition of magnesium nitrate you know magnesium nitrate is a group 2 nitrate so if any group 2 nitrate is heated it decomposes to produce group 2 oxide group 2 oxide means here as magnesium so this will be magnesium oxide and brown fumes of nitrogen dioxide and oxygen is produced here magnesium 1 magnesium 1 oxygen nitrogen 2 2 ones are 2 2 ones are 2 here 2 nitrogen 2 ones are 2 here 2 nitrogen balanced oxygen 3 to the 6 oxygen so here 1 2 2 the 4 5 if i write here half 2 2 cancel so 1 1 plus 4 plus 1 6 oxygen equation balance you know any group 2 nitrate magnesium nitrate calcium nitrate if you give heat supply heat it decomposes break down to produce group 2 oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen next state how the thermal stability of group 2 nitrates changes down the group you know down the group thermal stability increases so i write here increases i mean group 2 nitrate down the group thermal stability increases why you know down the group cation size increases as shell number increases so charge density decreases that's why cation polarizes nitrate ion less so thermal polarizes cation polarizes less means thermal stability is more that's why increases okay now next three phosphoric five acid phosphoric acid is used in both in organic and organic reactions phosphoric acid is made in two step process from phosphorus step 1 phosphorus reacts with excess oxygen to form a white solid step 2 the white solid then reacts with water to form phosphoric acid number a 1 write an equation for each step for step 1 and 2 write the equation question is asking you so step 1 phosphorus phosphorus p4 phosphorus exist as p4 
phosphorus reacts with excess oxygen to form phosphorus pentoxide P2O5. So its form as dimer P4O10. This is a white solid. A white solid is phosphorus pentoxide or phosphorus 5 oxide. Then this step 2 this phosphorus pentoxide reacts with water to form phosphoric acid phosphoric acid so at first phosphorus reacts with oxygen to produce phosphorus pentoxide then phosphorus pentoxide phosphorus pentoxide reacts with water to produce phosphoric acid step 1 and step 2 Number 2, phosphoric acid is a weak bronsted Lowry acid, weak, weak and acid. Define weak bronsted Lowry acid and you know bronsted Lowry acid means proton donor, gives proton, acid donates proton, this is the acid definition and weak. Weak means partially disso dissociates, partially breaks down in water. Weak acid partially ionizes in water or weak acid partially disso dissociates in water. And acid means proton donor, acid gives proton. Next B phosphoric acid are formed in the process also phosphoric acid can be formed from phosphorus acid. Here some compound is given and their enthalpy of formation, enthalpy change of formation are given, values are given, enthalpy of formation, phosphorus acid, phosphoric acid phosphine they are enthalpy change of formation or enthalpy of formation values are given now question is asking define definition question is asking define the enthalpy change of formation enthalpy of formation means you know definition formation means one mole of substance or one mole of compound will be formed now what is enthalpy change of formation you know enthalpy change when one mole of a compound is form is produced from its constituent elements in their standard state this is the definition of enthalpy change of formation enthalpy change of formation it is the enthalpy change when one mole of substance is from from its elements in their standard state under standard conditions this is enthalpy of formation definition. Now calculation use that use the data given table to calculate the enthalpy change of reaction one. First you think what's values are given you see this table enthalpy of formation values enthal del s f del h f enthalpy of formation values are given so you know formula if enthalpy of formation values are given then delta a reaction will be enthalpy change of reaction or enthalpy of reaction will be enthalpy of formation of product minus enthalpy of formation of reactant reactant reactants i mean you know the formula if enthalpy of formation values are given enthalpy of the reaction will be enthalpy of formation of product minus enthalpy of formation of reactant product values 
reactant values will be subtract from products value i mean products value minus reactant value now you see the answer you see delta h r this value is product two product minus four mole reactant four mole reactant you see plus nine plus three times phosphoric acid value is minus one two eight one this is the product minus reactant four times phosphorus acid phosphorus is minus nine seven two so if you calculate you get the answer this is the enthalpy of reaction equal this is the product enthalpy of formation 1 mole phosphine 3 mole phosphoric acid minus 4 mole of phosphoric acid 4 mole of four mole of phosphorus acid this is the this is the product and minus 4 mole of phosphorus acid if you sum you get this value enthalpy of reaction plus 54 kilojoule per mole Now you see number 3 explain why reaction 1 is a disproportionation reaction explain your reasoning with reference to the ox oxidation number that means why this is known as reaction 1 is known as disproportionation reaction explain your answer by giving oxidation number you see reaction 1 is the this this is the reaction 1. Now you see I write here reaction 1. This is the reaction 1. I write here for understanding. Phosphorus acid goes to phosphoric acid and phosphine PH3. Now you see here phosphorus oxidation number is plus 3. Here phosphorus oxidation number is plus 5. Here phosphorus is negative negative 3 so this proportion reaction no is a reaction in which an element is simultaneously oxidized and reduced i mean this proportion this proportion reaction an element or a species simultaneously simultaneously means at a time oxidized and reduced both happen now you see the answer phosphorus in H3PO3 here phosphorus is plus 3 is oxidized from plus 3 to here plus 3 plus 3 to plus 5 here plus 5 plus 5 where in phosphoric acid here phosphoric acid is plus 5 so phosphorus is oxidized from plus 3 to to plus 5 phosphorus is here oxidized and reduce from plus 3 to minus 3 minus 3 where in ph3 as 3 hydrogen plus 3 so phosphorus will be minus 3 that means 
phosphorus at a time oxidize plus 3 to plus 5 and in the same time reduce plus 5 to plus 3 to minus 3. Phosphorus oxidize from plus 3 to, to plus 5 oxidize and same time reduce plus 3 to minus 3. So, you can write phosphorus is oxidized and reduced simultaneously. That is why this reaction is known as disproportionation reaction. Now, this is from organic chemistry. Here, figure 3.1, this reaction scheme that involves phosphoric acid in some reactions. This what happened? This is an alkene goes to alcohol, secondary alcohol, then al this secondary alcohol oxidized to ketone, propanone. Then here, secondary alcohol reacts with KBr and phosphoric acid to form B. Reaction 3, what happened? Propantool reacts with carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid and phosphoric acid to form a star. This is our reaction scheme. Now, you are asking, you are asking question, identify A, who is reacts with propene in the presence of phosphoric acid in reaction 2. So, your reaction to alkene reacts with uh, alkene to forms alcohol that means you know alkene reacts with esteem in presence of phosphoric acid catalyst to form alcohol. So, answer will be water gas this is the esteem or you can write esteem. Then, Number 2 draw the structure of B, B is the 1, 2, 3. This is known as 2 bromopropen, 2 bromopropen. So, here how B happen? Here this OS group is substrate by bromine atom. Bromine atom. This is 2 bromo butane, sorry, 2 bromo propane. This is nucle nucleophilic substitution reaction. Next, name the type of reaction that occur in reaction 3. Answer is condensation. Ester alcohol reacts with carboxylic acid to form ester. This reaction type is condensation. You can write so reaction three. You see reaction three secondary alcohol. I mean propan to all reacts with ethanoic acid to produce an ester. This is an condensation reaction. Next one, reaction 3 is monitored using infrared spectroscopy. It is not possible to use OS absorption frequency to monitor the reaction. Use this table to identify suitable bond whose absorption frequency can be used to monitor the progress of the reaction 3. And reaction 3 at first you 3 reactions in what reaction happened? Reaction 3 this alcohol converted to ketone star ketone. So, you will see this absorption peak. Now, you see the answer. 
yes bond is see your carbon oxygen double bond carbon oxygen double bond change in infrared spectrum absorption wave number from 1670 to 1670 to 1740 to 1710 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 Organophosphate are compounds similar to esters. They have the general structure shown in this here. This is the organophosphate. This is general formula of organophosphate. And here this is alkyl group. R means so is given here alkyl group, methyl, ethyl, propyl. These are known alkyl group. This oxygen, this phosphorus. Now you are asking you are asking number a complete the equation to suggest the products of the reaction of phosphoric acid with methanol here this is the phosphoric acid methanol you see i write here this answer you can understand if you follow this so this methanol ch3ooh here phosphorus oxygen and o this ester and water will be formed so from alcohol lost OS from here hydrogen will be lost to form water now hydrogen here phosphorus phosphorus have so remaining hydrogen methanol this is lost and oxygen o is added so o c s 3 here in place of r o c s 3 here r o c s 3 here r 3 r o o c s 3 now reaction happen how reaction happen alcohol lost o s and Phosphoric acid is lost hydrogen. This hydrogen reacts with this to produce water plus water. I write here water. Water. Then in place of R, we write CH3. R O C S 3 3 C S 3 if you write here C S 3 O whole 3 C S 3 whole 3 1 2 3 C S 3 whole 3 P O plus water this is the reaction
now you see compound is a simple organ organophosphate and compound is shows molecular ion peak is given 182 mass by charge ratio value m by e e value and this peak has a relative intensity is given 12.7 relative in intensity of m plus 1 peak also given 0.84 deduce the number of carbon atoms in t and suggest the molecular form formula of t question is asking their number of carbon atom then their molecular formula of t so now you know the formula number of carbon atoms 100 divided by 1.1 .1 times abundance or intensity of m plus m plus 1 ion peak divided by intensity of m plus ion peak this is the formula then if you put values you will get 6 that means there are 6 carbon atoms in T so number of carbon atoms in T will be 6 you calculate here now you have to find out molecular formula of T so this molecular formula will be as 6 carbon so molecular formula will be C6 is 15 O4 and phi here R is the alkyl group will be C2 is 5 alkyl group will be C2 is 5 Okay, so alkyl formula will be C2 S5. Why? Because the compound T has 6 carbon atom. So if you keep R equal C2 S5, C2 S5, C2 S5. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 total 6 carbon and hydrogen will be S5 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 15 5 times 3 15 here 6 carbon atom 6 carbon atom 15 hydrogen oxygen 4 phosphorus 1 so r will be c2 s5 why because if c2 s5 r c2 s5 C2 S5 then carbon number will be 6 2 plus 2 plus 2 6 and hydrogen will be 5 plus 5 plus 5 15 4 oxygen and 1 phosphorus so you will get the molecular formula now come to next question number 4 lactic acid this and pyruvic acid this both contain two functional groups two functional group here one is carboxyl group alcohol group this also carboxyl group and carbonyl group co group now 
explain why lactic acid exists as optical iso optical isomers and you know optical isomers has chiral carbon and this carbon is chiral center because this carbon is attached to one two three four different group so it contains a chiral carbon that's why lactic acid exists as optical isomers then you see number 2 give the systematic name of lactic acid lactic acid systematic name systematic name you see this is how you will write this 1 2 3 propanoic acid but second carbon contains one hydroxy group so this name will be 2 hydroxy propanoic acid 2 hydroxy propanoic acid Two hydroxy two. This is two hydroxy one two three two hydroxy propanoic acid. And number three, you see lactic acid forms hydrogen bonds with water complete the table to the formation of hydrogen bonds one molecule of lactic acid and one molecule of water label the hydrogen bond so any relevant dipoles or lone pairs of electrons so you can this is the lactic acid this is I write here water and you know oxygen is delta minus oxygen is delta minus means partially negative and hydrogen is partially positive you know oxygen is a group 6 so it become it, it is negative ion that's why this bond oxygen partially negative hydrogen partially positive this partially positive hydrogen attract the partially negative oxygen of water molecule so this dotted line is known as hydrogen bond and you can also show your lone pair of electron oxygen have lone pair of electron two lone pair one lone pair forms bond with hydrogen so what is hydrogen bond the partially positive on of one lactic acid molecule attract the partially negative oxygen of one water molecule this dotted line is known as hydrogen bond as here lone pair is asking so you can here lone pair show two lone pair oxygen has two lone pair of electrons you know now you see number b propane alkene goes to dibromoalkane second step third step oxidize pyruvic acid is formed and ethanol this is aldehyde first step second step it go carboxylic acid and secondary alcohol and third step pyruvic acid i mean this part oxidized to ketone now you see what is asking in question mechanism you know complete the diagram to show the mechanism mechanism for the reaction propene with bromine propene reacts with bromine your reaction type will be electrophilic addi addition reaction okay 
now mechanism for the reaction propene with bromine you know propene reacts with bromine to form dibromopropane 1 2 dibromopropane this reaction type is electrophilic add addition reaction electrophilic addition reaction add 1 plus 1 equal 1 1 plus 1 equal 1 2 reactant react to form a 1 product this type of reaction is known as electrophilic addition reaction so now see the mechanism this bromine this electron is going to this bromine this bromine become partially negative and this bromine become partially positive then pi bond propene pi bond attracts the delta plus bromine so gives electron and this this bromine is added to with this carbon and this carbon become positive carbonium ion or carbocation then this to to this positive carbonium ion this bromide ion nucleophile negative bromine is added with this carbon to produce 1 2 3 1 2 dibromopropane this reaction mechanism is known as electrophilic addition reaction this bromine become delta minus this bromine become partially positive pi bond gives electron to this bromine and attach with this carbon this carbon so this carbon become positive second step to this positive carbon this bromide ion is added you will get you will get the product you will get the product now next this okay now write an equation for the oxidation of lactic acid to pyruvic acid in third step use active oxygen or nascent, nascent oxygen to represent an oxidizing agent so you can write here oxidizing agent just simply this is secondary alcohol group oxidized to ketone C C H OH will oxidize to CO other CH3 CWS remain same plus water oxidation now you see complete the stable give details reagents you have to write and conditions from this synthesis you see reagent and condition used first step second step third step and synthesis from propene the reagent is bromine and synthesis from ethanol you see propene okay first you see from propene propene bromine to form dibromopropane then second step you get carboxylic acid second is to get aqua sodium hydroxide 
aqueous sodium hydroxide you will get you will get alkane diol third step acidified potassium dichromate primary alcohol will oxidize to form carboxylic acid so you see the first from propene you see the reaction scheme first step propene reacts with bromine to form 1 2 3 1 2 dibromopropene then second step if it reacts with sodium hydroxide aqueous so you will get 1 2 dihydroxypropene 1 2 dihydroxypropene so reagent will be aqueous sodium hydroxide after that if it oxidize this primary alcohol will go to the carboxylic acid and secondary alcohol will go to the ketone so you will get pyruvic acid that's why first reaction is aqueous sodium hydroxide aqueous sodium hydroxide then you have to oxidize acidified potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate now from ethanol first reagent hydrogen cyanide in in presence of potassium cyanide second step dilute sulfuric acid or dilute hydrochloric acid i mean acid hydrolysis third step acidified potassium dichromate now you see the reaction scheme second step ethanol ethanol if reacts with hydrogen cyanide so this will be os and cyanide o take hydrogen and this carbon will be cyanide 1 2 3 2 hydroxypropane nitrile then second step this cyanide group cn group nitrile group acid hydrolysis it will convert to cws group carboxyl group so cn group go to cws group acid hydrolysis third step you see secondary alcohol group convert to ketone you know acidified potassium dichromate need that's why you see now first need hydrogen cyanide potassium cyanide that will be nitrile compound after that dilute hydrochloric acid sulfuric acid nitrile compound transfer to carboxylic acid then acidified potassium dichromate secondary alcohol group oxidized to ketone and you will get pyruvic acid thank you dear students please subscribe like and share my channel thank you